Hey there guys, what's going on? Gail right here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Danmachi Memorial Freeze video and today we're back with another tier list. This time we're taking a look at the water magical units. Now if you haven't watched the water physical units, you can go check that out. That was uploaded yesterday or right before this video went out. So if you guys want to go check that out, please be sure to go check it out. We tier listed all the water physical units in that video but today in this video the one you're watching right now we're looking at the water magical units now of course if you guys go on to enjoy this video smash the like button subscribe to the channel for more content and leave a comment down below about any sort of discrepancies you notice uh of course yesterday i know a couple of people mentioned about certain units like uka and stuff which i completely agree with in some ways but in some ways i disagree with so it's all fair games it's all opinion at the end of the day uh i'm not here to give you guys like a straight up like oh this is definitively the tier list right um there are going to be some discrepancies i think a lot of players will have like one one unit higher or one unit lower potentially right so bear that in mind it's not a hard and fast rule that this tier list is perfect in any shape or form but I try my best. I try to give you guys a good opinion on what these units can do and what these units are capable of doing in this meta today, both in PvE content as well as PvP content, okay? So, the water phys uh sorry. I'm thinking about the water physical tier list right now, but the water magical units are quite low in terms of numbers compared to the water physical units, and we have way more Lafias than we do any other character in this set to be honest. But it is what it is. I know, I mean, when when we come to magical units, we're bound to see a bunch more uh Reverias and Lafias as well as Philbuses. Those three are mainly magic units, so we tend to see them there primarily, all right? So, let's start off with the first unit in this list and this is the christmas eyes the first ever christmas we had had this eyes in that and as you can see there's no uh hero ascension for this unit unfortunately so that means her stats are extremely low uh pretty decent actually for her time because she had the null physical attack times two and the ability to reduce an opponent's ag uh, agility by 20 percent very good for her time uh unfortunately not so good right now uh, i would say it goes into d straight away unfortunately because no hero ascension no buffs very very old school has like one buff maybe two buffs at most right two buffs slash debuffs i should say because primarily she's debuffing the enemy right um so yeah i think that's a very so solid d rank unit i can't really add much more on that one we've already ranked this lafia as well um way back when in the fire tier list she's back again purely because she has actually three elements this is one of the only few units that has three elements in her she's got water as a special she's got light as her skills as well as fire so yeah, but I mean, you can see the kit right now. She does have an hero ascension, but even then, with the hero ascension as well, look at those stats, man. It's not that hot. D rank, easily. Very easily a D rank unit here. All right, we move on to the next one. Offshore Elf Lafia. I remember this Lafia. She was insane for a specific reason, and that was Record Buster. Yes, Record Buster, she was cracked. Because she was able to reduce the opponent's MRES and water as by 20%, gives herself 80% magic. Again, for her time, phenomenal. Now, however, not so much. I mean, her stats as well. If you look at her stats, 1773 mag magic, it doesn't cut it in this day and age. Most magic units in this day and age have about 2000 to 2100 magic in their stats at max hero ascension. So for me, this unit goes again into D. No uh, additionals, very low stats. Uh, very low modifiers as well. I mean, you look at this. These are very low modifiers if you think about it, right? Mid, high, high. I mean, not that hot. And uh, as a result, she'll go straight into D, unfortunately. Not starting off well, you know. For somebody who said water was a phenomenal, uh, you know, uh, phenomenal element, not so hard for the magic side of things. The physical was great, right? The magic side has not been too hot right now. So... Let's hope things go up a level, but I don't think it's going to go up a level with this April Fool's Time Limited Lafia. <laughs> it's not looking too hot. It's not looking too hot. I mean, you can see the stats. It's a free-to-play unit. We're going to see it when... Uh, I mean, yeah... I mean, yeah, I can't really say much about this unit. This is another D rank unit. Let's be real. Let's not get it twisted, bros. Come on. 5% water magic rest. This is an April Fool's unit. You shouldn't be expecting too much from this unit in the slightest, honestly. You shouldn't be expecting much from this unit. So I have to say, it's a D rank unit, unfortunately. All right, next one. Arcanic Cascade Lafia. 
I think this is another one of those uh, single target Lafias. What is with water Lafias being single target? I could be wrong though. No, it is a single target uh, uh, water Lafia. What are with the... Uh, come on, Lafia is getting a lot of love from the water side, uh, water single target setup. Um, this one, on the other hand, I would say, you know, we've been ranking a lot of these units D rank. This one has something more. She's got the damage and boost per self magic buff. Water is minus 50% for two turns on her first skill, uh, on her special, I should say. 20% MP heal, magic dexterity and water attack damage plus 60% and minus 30% agility. The 30% agility is a kind of an eh one. Obviously, it helps out in reducing the opponent's chance to crit and stuff like that. But still, it's not something that you're looking forward to. Then we have frozen, frozen solid, frozen. I said frozen. I, I'm out of it, bro. I'm really out of it. But uh, frozen solid is Emrez and water res minus 30% for three turns. And then finally, shatter solid is 60% per each self magic buff skill and water attack damage buffs will be removed afterwards. Interesting. So I would say this was a very strong unit back in the day, I would say. The idea was that you would go, uh, you know, skill 1, then skill 2, and then maybe skill 3 to wrap it all up, right? Um, that being said, though, would I say this unit is really was really, really good back then? Yes. Now, would I say it's really, really good? No, not really. Maybe, but I wouldn't put her in C, though. Because I think she'll still be able to perform really well for a water team, period, right? Especially if you're running her on a magic setup, right? But how uh, do I put her in C or B? I don't think you would put her in B though. I, I really don't. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm very much deliberating here. The resistance decrease is nice. Um, the thing is you're wanting... Uh, okay. No, you know what? I think I'll put her in B. Lower end of B. She might be at the end of B. But I think I'll put her in B because she'll still be able to deal damage. She's suffering from the issue of her removing her own buffs. So that means you're going to be able to use that attack only once at the end of it all. And you have to be careful about how you micromanage, you know, you using this Shatter Solid skill and then using her special arts because you don't want to risk using that last skill and then the magic buffs and water attack damage buffs go away. And then you have to use this Thermal Ray, which, you know, you're it's weaker because you've lost that magic buff, right? So... I think I would probably say this is a B rank unit. It's just that she's a very finicky unit. So maybe on the lower end of B, I would say. Probably lower end of B. Lower end of B. All right. Another Lafia comes in here. I'm hoping that this one isn't a... Um, I'm hoping this one isn't another single target unit. A zero star elf Lafia. Hallelujah. A single tar a non-single target Lafia. Finally. Jesus. Alright. So Rising Heart. Foes Ultra Water Magic Attack Damage plus 40% per each of Magic and Water Attack Damage buff skill. And Ultra Penetration Rate and Water is minus 60% for 3 turns. Really good for PvE side of things. Really, really good for PvE. For sure. Um, because you're getting so much damage here. You're getting basically 160% damage boost from that first uh, ability, right? From uh, magic and water attack damage buff skills. Because if you have assists and, uh, you know, her own buffs, she'll be fine there. And then on top of that, she's dropping the opponent's resistance, uh, water resistance by 60% for three turns. Which is a crack. Um, really, really helpful for, uh, you know, uh, those PvE content uh, phases. So first skill is Overflowing Love. Fast high water magic attack with ultra and counter rate and 20% charm with allies magic 50% and critical rate 40% for 2 turns. 2. Okay. Redemption. Fast avoids KO once only when HP is 10% or more. Gives self agility. God rate 60% for 3 turns with 3 actions of mid water magic attack with foe, um, uh, foes with ultra and god rate. And then stellar, uh, stellar realize. Uh, realize. I, I see what they did there. Uh, super water magic attack with temporary great magic boost. Okay. I initially said that she would be phenomenal for, uh, you know, something like uh, PvE, but uh, not so much now. <laughs> not so much now. The She's not giving herself water attack damage boost, which kind of invalidates this, so you're going to have to rely on another unit. She's only giving herself 50% magic to all allies, which is okay. I'm Again, I don't think this is a bad thing necessarily, but that's okay. 40% critical rate is nice for sure. Agility boost and god rate is always good, but it was only for self. I would probably put her in B. Probably in B. Unfortunately, she'll go into B. So far, Water Magical is not looking too hot, I must admit. Two B rank units and then a lot of Ds so far. So, unfortunate, it is what it is. These, these guys are pretty old. I think this Popstar event was what? 
2020, I think, nearly the end of 2020. So this is nearly a two-year-old unit. So it makes sense that, you know, it is looking a little bit odd in that regards. That being said, she does have some decent things going for her still. The midwater magic attack, um, you know, being able to inflict charm potentially could go well on ailment. Uh, you know, the, the, the sp uh, special arts is really solid for sure, right? Um, it's just that... Yeah, she has a killer as well, so it can come in handy in certain uh, familiar rush events, familiar royal events, right? So, in that regards, there is something there, but I wouldn't necessarily say this is a phenomenal unit in the slightest, to be honest. So, we move, um, that's all the Lafia has done. So far, it's not looking too hot, right? And I don't think it's gonna improve that much from here on out, but let's have a look. So, Summer Fun Lily Ruka, this is a Lily that came out, uh, Pretty early on. This was, I think, the second summer event or the first summer event. I don't remember which one it was, but I remember it was the other Summer Princess Eyes. And I think that was the first summer event. I don't think they had a summer event the year before that, if I'm not mistaken, right? So this was a 2018 unit. Uh, I remember she was also another unit that I managed to max out completely as well. Um, that being said, though, she is old. She is old. Just like that Summer Princess Eyes, she is old. She's very similar to that Eyes. And actually, you would run these two together because... Um, effectively what they would do is one removes the SDR buffs, this removes the magic buffs. One, uh, I think would, uh, decrease the amount of turns your allies had status debuffs on. This would increase the amount of, oh no, sorry. It, she, Summer Princess Eyes would decrease the amount of turns the status buffs were active on the foes. This one would increase the amount of status buffs, uh, debuffs active on the foe. So it would increase it by a turn. And then on Frozen Water, it would decrease Magic Resist by 20%. Overall, this was a very solid unit back in the day. But I would say again, right now, it's a D. Sorry, Lily Ruka. That's a that's a very solid D. I can't really give it much more than that. And I mean, if you look at the stats as well, right? It's going to be 19... Oh, no, not even 1900. I thought it was like 1850 to 1900. But it's 1759. Very low. Not good enough. Not good enough. All right. Wedding Lily Ruka. This Lily Ruka is decent, I think pretty decent if i recall correctly but not amazing she's able to give god raid and heal minus 40 percent for four turns really good for stall i suppose ally status debuff minus two turns so any sort of like debuffs on ter in terms of str dexterity or anything that goes well special arts is only 50 percent seal not so hot here then you have uh, on her second skill fast mid water magic attack removes god raid and heal buffs on the enemy again primarily there to help out with ensuring that you're able to effectively penetrate through status uh not status stall, stall teams um magic and water attack damage plus 40 percent not so good in this day and age but it's okay um and then the last skill is a normal one i think this is a b rank unit um c rank c rank i'll go with c rank she's got no uh, additional actions uh, another unit that actually got a buff recently, I think the wedding units only got their buffs a couple of months ago, but this isn't a, a huge improvement in all honesty, should, should have been way better, should have been way better, a couple of additional actions and stuff would have made her way better, but yeah, that's what she's missing, additional actions in all honesty, I think that's the big difference here. Alright, next up we have Commander Lily Ruka, this is the anime gacha Lily Ruka, so... As you can see, modern stats. Finally, we're getting to modern stats. 1200 agility, 2000 magic. Uh, this is an AoE unit again. So, allies, STR magic, critical rate, penetration rate, counter rate, 75% for three turns. Really good again in PvE content, I would say, because you're getting so much buffs here. Um, you know, the counter rate is going up, the critical rate is going up, penetration, STR magic, 75%. It's not that 100% or 120% that, you know, the Haruhimes can give or Wiene can give on single target teams, right? But she's able to deal damage as well, which means that she's going to be a good option for a lot of players when they're trying to do a sort of uh, familiar rush event or familiar royale event and trying to maximize the amount of damage they're able to get right the most more score you get the better so i would say that's where she's going to be decent in then on sharp insulate she's got a single target high water magic attack plus 40 percent per each target's agility reduction skill and ultra gun god rate her second skill is mid water magic attack with ultra and counter rate with agility penetration rate and water res minus 40 percent and self water attack damage plus 70 percent for four turns and three actions of mid water magic attack foes uh, and status buffs on allies for two turns. That's a really solid skill if you think about it, right? You're getting agility down, you're getting water res down, penetration rate is there. The only thing I think that needed to be here in this skill to make it very good and probably used by a lot more players is it should have been a fast skill. I think a fast skill would have made this very, very strong. 
Then on Commander's Rally, it's actually a very similar skill to, funnily enough, it's a very similar skill to Shadow of Ryu and the new Haruhime, the, the Christmas 2022 Haruhime. Fast P res, M res, counter rate, uh, uh, guard rate, and heal, minus 35% on foes. And then allies get SCR magic, counter rate, guard rate, and heal 35% for one turn. It's not as good as them, but it's good. I wouldn't necessarily say it would be a meta unit for sure. But I don't think it's a... It, this isn't a unit that would be bad to, to say the least, right? I think she's a good supporting unit. That's the main process, uh, thought process here. Um, I would say low A. If there are other units in A, this will probably be on the lower side of A. Because I don't think she's bad to the point where she's in B. Again, it's just like the Uka yesterday. She's modern enough. She's got the right stats. She's got the agility. It's just that she's missing... The attack, I think. The attack side of things is what she's missing primarily. If she had another skill, like say, okay, if they remove this uh, first skill, I think if they remove sharp insulate, uh, sharp insulate, sorry, for something else like a high, you know, high water attack damage. Well, actually, no. If they had just removed the, uh, if they had kept it like that, the first skill, but made it foes, and maybe they had an extra effect on it. I would have said this is an easy A no matter what. Very good unit, overall very solid. But because it's a single target, there's no other attacking move. This is the only one. She's got the additional actions though and all that jazz. She's got stuff going for her. I would probably say this is an A rank unit still though, but either very low point. So low A is where I would place her. All right, we move on to wealth next. Uh, Glacier Blade Wealth. This I think was a unit from the season three anime, if I'm not mistaken. I think, I think, I'm not sure. Um, Blizzard Hawk, uh, uh, Blizzard Hawk, I don't know why I'd say, I, I was struggling there. Ultra Water Magic Attack with Temporary Grade Magic Boost and High Penetration Rate with Allies, STR, Magic, P-Res, and M-Res 50%. Very similar to the previous unit we just saw. Glacial Mark, Fast P-Res, M-Res, Magic and Water Attack Damage plus 50% for 4 turns. 3 actions of Low Water Magic Attack. Then Foes Fast wa Mid Water Magic Attack, Magic Boost with Allies, P-Res, M-Res, Fire, Water, Thunder, Earth, Wind, Light, Dark, Resist, Debuff minus 3 turns. And then her fi his final skill is Foes High Water Magic Attack Damage plus 30% per each Self Water Attack Damage Buff and Ultra Uncounter Rate. High B. High B, high B, high B, high B. I would probably put him in high B. Good unit in the sense of he's doing a decent amount of stuff for himself. He's helping out the allies. He's got the uh, he's got some damage there as well, but it's not high enough. It's not high enough. He's also got low water magic attack on foes, which means he's gonna deal less damage compared to say the Lily Ruka's additional actions we saw earlier on, right? So small things like that, and then of course on top of that, I would say because he's a ma magic unit, it, there is a little bit of a thing of like his speed is going to matter a lot, and the fact that he's not got any sort of like agility buffing himself up or anything of that sort or debuffing the enemy it's gonna hurt him a little bit so i would say probably a high b but no more than that i would say no more than that all right ryu uh, this is another one of those early christmas units christmas one ryu no hero ascension i have to give this a d had an avoids ko and stuff like that but yeah, it's a, it's a D rank unit, unfortunately. All right, next up we have Intoxicating Elf Ryu. Now, I don't remember when this Ryu came out, but I remember she was actually pretty decent. And I remember her being phenomenal for single target teams, especially because I think Water was like a very good... It had a very good setup for single targets because we had the... Um, Third anniversary Ryu, we had the Ocean's Eleven Riveria. Sorry, I meant uh, the third anniversary Riveria, single target Riveria for water. We had the Ocean's Eleven uh, Riveria, as I like to call her. Uh, and then we had this Ryu. So they were all three together were great. Um, and she's actually still pretty decent if you think about it. Because on her first skill, she does damage received, attack type, single target, 20%. And gives herself 65% water and magic attack damage, plus 65%. Um, then she re reduces the opponent's SDR and magic 45% and then she does a lot of effects effective uh, She does a lot of damage per each target skill effect that increases damage received attack type single target So effectively she's giving herself 170% boost on that third skill now the only issue is she doesn't have any additional actions I think even for modern standards this unit is actually pretty decent. It's just that right now I would probably say because of uh, the lack of additional actions and potentially some slight 
issues with her like for example and target skill effect that increases damage received minus one turn so the opponent takes uh you know reduces the, we effectively reduce the amount of turns their debuffs are active because of this view uh which isn't necessarily an issue because we have other units you know extending those debuffs anyway so it works out both ways even right um i would probably say b b for sure b for sure i would say probably b she's got decent stats she's got a good skill set i think the only thing she needs is maybe a little bit of a buff potentially in the near future and then she could probably go back up in a decent spot to be honest i'd say a decent spot okay next up kunoichi yamato mikoto 1850 magic i think she was part of the oceans 11 event as well if i recall correctly with that other riveria that i mentioned and a riveria we'll actually see in a little bit um uh, yeah i mean she was actually i remember people using her a lot way back when because effectively what you're getting is a self null physical attack on her as well she's got that magic 80 percent but like there's nothing else here to be honest i would say c c is a good spot for her. um decent but not um i wouldn't use her to be honest all right violet stream mikoto this is a, the fourth anniversary mikoto if i'm not mistaken and uh another single target unit <laughs> i think we've had more single target units in this uh water magical tier list than we've had aoe units in all honesty which is crazy to think about but okay um blue flower storm ultra water magic attack with ultra on god raid damage plus 100 percent pre cell magic buff and remove status buffs on foes which is okay uh pretty interesting um water pattern 33 uh, MP increased as a gate charge gained by 33% self magic dexterity water attack damage plus 75% for four turns. Uh, tidal thrust low water magic attack with temporary magic boost and M res and water res minus 40% for four turns. And then four, uh, and, and then skill number three is super water, water magic attack and status debuff plus two turns and three actions of mid water magic attack and removes STR and magic buffs on foes. A easy a i don't think i have to say anything else about these the fourth anniversary units are all still very good options for record buster or war game so i have to put it i have to put her in a she's still very solid gives sa gate charge to the team she gives herself some really good buffs there with magic and water attack damage plus 75 percent and as well as dexterity reduces the m res and water res by 40 percent makes her a phenomenal option as even a sacrificial unit to be honest as well right um maybe for more modern options in terms of water res and stuff right and then her third skill is actually also pretty decent so in all honesty i would say this unit is a solid a um for sure for sure all right we move into the next unit now i think we're going on to the reveria so as you guys can see here i can't scroll it down but let's look at the first reveria this is dress Ro royal reveria now this unit is an aoe unit i remember because i've used her a lot and uh but unfortunately her stats and her skill sets i think are going to show that she hasn't aged extremely well um Frost Nova Foes, mid-water magic attack with ultra and counter raid, mid uh, M res and water res, men is 25%. Uh, single target high water magic attack with temporary magic boost and high penetration rate. And then the third skill is a high water magic attack with temporary magic boost and ultra and god raid and damage received attack type alt and single targets plus 20% for two turns. This unit is a solid c unfortunately i loved using her back in the day i think she was a great unit because she did so much you know reducing the opponent's resistances uh increasing amount of damage they received but she wasn't buffing herself up she wasn't doing anything else it's a c it's a very solid c though uh but yeah it's just sh it's a shame i really like this unit i uh, i still have her mlb and i really like using her but uh unfortunately she has aged Okay, Regina Riveria. This is another one of these units that came with the Ocean's 11 event, like I'll call it, like as I like to call it because it was literally Ocean's 11. Um, 1876 magic, 40% uh, magic and water attack damage to allies, removes STR buffs on the second skill, and third skill, attack type, single target plus 20% for three turns. Now, another C rank unit in all honesty, not doing too much here, honestly, not doing too much here. No additional actions. She has aged. It's just like the Mikoto these units have aged unfortunately so i would probably put her in c all right next up we have ninth dual riveria this unit is going to probably get a buff in january actually funnily enough this is a third anniversary unit we are likely to see her get a buff 
uh, in the near future. Uh, but what does she do right now? Ultra water magic attack damage plus 70% per each self water attack damage buff skill. And foe removes SGN magic buff skill. Great. Thumbs up there. Um, increases SA gate charge and water attack damage 100% for 4 turns. Plus reactions of low water magic attack. Uh, I'm going to skip the middle one because that should be last. Uh, because in all honesty... You're gonna get basically a sort of understanding of like where we're com where I'm coming from when I say that. Diamond Lance, high water magic attack with ultra on guard, or with high on guard rate I should say, sorry. And self magic and dexterity for 3 turns. And then, her piercing chill skill is her main skill, her main damage dealing skill. Slow super water magic attack with temporary magic boost and high critical rate and self critical rate and high penetration rate plus 50% for 1 turn. Now... This Riveria is probably going to end up being way better, in all honesty. I think the only things they need to do to make her really strong is, one, increase her stats a little bit. Doesn't have to be a major amount. She's got good enough stats. But, effectively, this needs to turn into mid-water magic attack. This needs to turn into 75% magic and dexterity, I would say, at the very minimum. And this needs to be two turns. Literally, that's all they need to do. She's a phenomenal unit right now anyways, and I think she's still usable for a lot of players in Record Buster. It's just that she needs that little bit more to keep herself going, I would say. That's the only thing I would say about her. Right now, I would probably put her in... B. Uh, do I put her in B or do I put her in A? No, I have to put her low A, I feel. Because I feel like she's still a great option for those running a water magic team. That being said, there aren't that many people running water magic. But I think if you're coming back to the game, you're going to still get a great score with her on your team. Um, assuming you're running her with good setups, right? Uh, <laughs> I should specify that. Uh, if you're running her with good setups and everything, I think she'll still be a great option. Do I go high, low A or high B? Because because obviously for the end of the video tier list, I have to put them in one spot. I can't put them in the, in the middle, unfortunately. That is not how it works. Low A. I'm going to say low A just on the basis of we might get to see her go to S potentially. And I don't think she deserves to be lower than that, to be honest. I think low A is fair. I have to give it to her. I have to give it to her on low A. Okay. Next up, we have Philvis Merry Maiden. Uh, okay. Uh, this is going to be interesting because I know it's one of these two Philvises that are n n nasty in war games as well as in terms of uh, units, to be honest. In terms of like being great options to go up against uh, for magic teams, right? Um, so, we'll start off with their special arts. Magic and water res minus 50% for one turn. Ultra water magic attack. Okay, that's fine. Arcane Freeze, uh, Dexterity and Endurance minus 30% and Self Magic, Agility and Water Attack damage plus 60% for 3 turns and 3 actions of low water magic attack. Uh, Howling Blizzard is fast high water magic attack with Ultra and God Rate, P res, M res and Water res minus 30% for 3 turns. And then her third skill is a normal single target skill. Um, I think this is one of those units that are actually a bit of a menace to society in war games, I think. But I think it's the other Philvis. We'll come to the other Philvis in just a second. This Philvis is still pretty decent, though. I would say high B, for sure. Very strong unit in terms of being able to increase her own agility. She's got that uh, reduction in dexterity and endurance, so you're lowering their defenses effectively a bit there. Um, then you've got the three additional actions of low water magic attack, so you're going to hit that follow-up really easily. And then you've got that fast high water magic attack with ultra and guard rate and then the reduction in P res, M res and water res. So she can actually work extremely well with even physical units in all honesty. So something to bear in mind there in all honesty. I would say high B. Yeah, high B. High B is where I place her. All right. Let's move on to the next of Philvis. I think this is the one. This is the one that's a nasty, nasty one to face off against. Kitty Star, Philvis Shala. Um, first skill, special, Possum Revive. Ultra water magic attack plus damage uh, damage plus 40% per each self magic water attack damage buff skill. So total of 160 there. And ultra critical rate and embrace minus 60% for 3 turns. Showdown stage. Ha fast high water magic attack with ultra and counter rate and SGR magic minus 40% and self magic and counter rate plus 60% for 3 turns. And 3 actions of mid water magic attack foes with ultra on guard rate. The next thing is that she has a fan service, fast penetration rate and water attack damage plus 50% and foes water res minus 40%. And then um, third skill is high water magic attack and damage 150 only when a target is inflicted by charm. Very, very specific there, I must admit. Um, 
high B as well. Maybe maybe low A. I feel like I've seen people use her a lot. I'm, I always get confused between the two Philvises. I'm not gonna lie. And this is where I say, like, I realistically don't pay too much attention to some of the enemies I face in war games. I just go in and just be like, just win and come back home, please, lads. Like, like literally, I'm just saying, go, go fight, come back home. Let me know what the result was. If you lost, it's fine. We move on to the next one. If it was a win, great. We move on to the next one. <laughs> I don't pay too much attention to teams, unfortunately. Um, and, and when I do, it's usually the more popular units I intend to see. I don't see these magic units tend to, you know, usually. And it, right now, obviously, magic units, I mean, if you look at what's running amok in uh, in uh, war games, let's, uh, let's have a look. I mean, we can literally have a look right now and see what's running amok in certain... Also, I need to use my passes. Don't look at that. Um, let's look at some magic teams. I mean, we know that... Uh, uh, I mean, of course, uh, the, she's running amok, of course. This lovely lady here. We've got Lyra, Wiene, um But yeah, we're, we've got these units. Uh, Artie. Uh, Artie is running around. We've got uh, Elise running around. Um, and then if you look at some other magic options, Valletta, as I mentioned, Supply Princess Eyes is also going about, right? Um, so there are magic units running about, but I don't think there's any that consists of, uh, uh, Mikoto in any, oh, not Mikoto, Philvis, sorry, I should say. Let's look at my follow list. Maybe, may, maybe there might be somebody around these ends that have, has it. Maybe, 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 maybe. No. Uh, n uh, nothing of that sort. Paul, I know, is running a physical team. What's Neon running? I think Neon's also running a physical team, so I really shouldn't be paying too much attention there. But yeah, it, I, I think I'll put her in B. I think I'll put her in B for now. I think this, uh, uh Philvis is still tall enough. I think both, uh, both the Philvises are pretty decent, but maybe their age has started showing, and potentially that's why we're not seeing them so often and we're just getting to see more magic units i mean literally i think the last three months we've literally just had magic units over magic units since the anniversary i think we've had more magic units than we've had physical units so it makes sense that we're starting to see a phase out of some of the old guard when it comes to you know older magic units right we're seeing wiene come in we're seeing Li uh, uh, elise come in we're seeing uh uh, Lyra come in, we're seeing Valletta, we're seeing, um, you know, for, uh, even, you could make an argument that potentially we could see the new units coming in, potentially after some usage and testing, I don't think so, if otherwise we would have already seen them in the hands of top players, but even the Lily Ruka that just released, even the um, Fear that we just got, right? So there, there's been just so many magic units that I don't think this Philvis has just maintained its spot. So I think B as well here. Both uh, both Philvis get a B. Now, another fourth anniversary unit in Aphrodite, Lunar Blesser. Um, solid unit for what, what she was back in the day, I remember. 50% charm, critical rate, penetration rate, counter rate, 60% to allies, not that hot. Uh, pure Temptation, fast damage received, plus 35%, great as a sacrificial unit, self magic, dexterity, P res, and M res, 60% for 4 turns, and 4 actions of low water magic attack and damage plus 150% only when a target is inflicted with charm on foes. Pretty decent, I guess, as an option for, you know, ailment if you're running something like that. Um, fast high water magic attack with ultra counter rate, 35% charm, and ally status debuff minus 2 turns. B. B. Easily B. I would say B uh, again here. Um, not a bad unit, but again, not perfect in any shape or form unfortunately lacking that cutting edge i would say and just missing some stuff that would make her probably an a rank unit i would say um stuff like you know lack of water attack damage and then potentially you know the fact that she's dealing so much damage only via uh, uh, an infliction on charm this one not being a super magic attack Again, small things, small things, not major things, but small things that are cu cutting her from being an A rank unit. But there you guys go. That's all the units ranked in Water Magic. Of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash the like button. Uh, the tier list with all the units will be up on your screens right now. You guys can see it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed uh, watching this content. Um, unfortunately, I would say Water Magic was probably the weakest, uh, in all honesty, so far. Even with Fire Magic, Fire Physical, Water Physical, and now Water Magical. It has taken a little bit of a hit, I would say. Definitely a little bit of a hit. Let me know what you guys think, though. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this content, as always. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and like I said, comment down below if you feel I've been a bit too harsh with certain units, like Philvis and stuff, or I've been too kind to some units. Maybe like this Lily Ruka, right? I think I was a bit too kind to her, potentially. But let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.